I was a few months away from turning 30. Minus the dreamy husband I'd always pictured falling into bed with. Without the gaggle of babies I'd manifested lining up dolls in my room since the age of seven. And I was desperately trying to break the shackles of an abusive childhood that left me pretty broken. Haunted by my past and fearing the future, I needed an out. It was time to make a change. No point picking up my dusty violin and wallowing in self-pity. It's really time to shake things up. My gypsy feet got pretty excited. I needed massive change, like huge. What's bigger than Mount Everest? I love nature. Yeah, I love a challenge. Boom, Mount Everest it was. Fast forward six months and I'm on the plane. A tiny plane that I really felt was held up together by gaffer tape. <laughs> and I'm calming myself by singing ever so quietly, ain't no mountain high enough. I'm riddled with doubt. I don't even know who I'm doing this for anymore. Why the hell do I want to get to the top of this bloody peak? I get off the plane and I meet my Sherpa, Tashi. He's good at English. Looks like he can carry some bags. Good fit. In that moment, I really, really hoped that we'd get there and they'd say that the trail was closed, bad weather. Oh, oh no, trail's closed? Oh cool, let me just take my selfie for Instagram and I'll be on my way home. <laughs> trail's not closed. We're going on. First thing I see, seven survival rules for climbing Mount Everest. Always have the last word on your safety. Respect the weather. Drink plenty of water. <laughs> know yourself. Use the ropes. Know your gear. And last but definitely not least, avalanche. Avalanche. Tashi tells me that I've overpacked. I can keep the bare essentials, but I've got to strip off those thermal layers. And apparently cute underwear, not important. <laughs> I've got all the tools I need, and I've got my torch, because you always need to see light through the dark, right? Dark, bellowing crevices and shiny pinnacles of blue and green made this adventure beyond breathtaking. There were times where I was so giddy with happiness. Like, you wouldn't believe, I'm on the most epic adventure, I totally got this. And then boom, all of a sudden, I'm in the depths of despair. Altitude sickness has taken its toll, and I don't know if I'm actually going to make this anymore. My feet have gone numb. My nose feels like it's going to fall off, even though I'm wearing a mask, and nothing in this moment can make me joyful. I wish I could tell you more about my trip. But I've actually never been to Mount Everest. <laughs> I haven't even been to Nepal. But I truly believe that every single one of us is in some way, at some point, climbing our own Everest. I started this climb because I didn't want to sit down and say I couldn't put my boots on anymore. Those seven signs, those seven survival rules, they're real. They don't just apply to Mount Everest. We all have the knowledge that at some point an avalanche could hit. We just don't learn to manage how to cope with it. Those ropes, they're always there for us to hold on to, to let go of, to swing from, to pull us up and to let us down gently. And as for knowing our gear, knowing ourselves, well, I think we know what we've got. It's a pretty good start. Sometimes our heart must feel like it's numb with frostbite then those clouds clear and the sun comes right out and warms it right back up. Attitude sickness, that is real. It's that crippling self-doubt and self-judgment that makes us <coughs> cling to stability and blocks our own vision. <coughs> I don't know about you, but I sometimes feel like that rickety plane held <coughs> together by a measly bit of tape and then yet other days we're our own Sherpas guiding the way with our intuition <coughs> and living our purpose. Maybe I don't need a thousand likes on Instagram to tell me I'm doing okay. And maybe we don't need to climb Mount Everest 
to prove our self-worth. Why Everest? Why not just Mount Buller? And why are we so focused on getting to this peak or future and not just enjoying the beauty of the present valley? In the words of Sir Edmund Hillary in 1968 on his third climb of Mount Everest, he said, someday you'll learn to turn your eyes from the peak to the valley. So really, it's pretty simple. The peak, the valley, it's just a tiny part of our epic journey. The truth, the beauty, the magic, those highs and lows, they're really truly experienced on our own journey. We all have our own Mount Everest. We all have the tools to use, and we all have our own Sherpa guiding us along the way. <laughs>